Okay, the purpose of this film is to, is to help teachers uh, with the technical aspects of building um, a matrix from a set of word sums. Um, the, it's such an, the matrix is just such a critical tool for teaching. Uh, teachers need to be able to build their own matrices based on their own investigations. Uh, you will want kids to be able to be comfortable uh, doing the same, and they're so, kids are so great with the computers. Once they get started with this, the actual building of the matrices becomes just a brilliant way to engage with the interrelation of structure and meaning with words. So it's just really helpful if teachers are comfortable with the technical part of this. So um, this film actually is related to one that I'm going to make uh, immediately after that actually shows the investigation of these uh of the word refugee and related words. Um, for now, I'm not going to focus on that. And what we'll pretend here is that you've already seen that uh, investigation. And now we've arrived at this set of word sums. Um, and we've discovered that refugee actually has a bound base, F-U-G-E. And we discovered that that goes back to a uh, Latin fugere. I'm not sure if that's the right pronunciation, but that it has this underlying denotation of flee, which links in meaning to all of the words that we've found. So the first thing we do now that um, we've established this uh, list of uh, related uh, word sums, um, I just go to table. And it doesn't. I'm using Word because that seems to be what most teachers are working with. Any uh, program you have that uh, builds tables, the, the principles will be really very much the same. So I can do it this way. I can go table in insert a table. And I just, as a default, usually start with three columns and two rows and just go from there. Um, I'm going to move this down a little bit. And to start, I usually go right just into the center because I, I'm going to assume I'm going to have a base at the center and I only want to have one cell there. So I go to this and I merge cells. You'll have some instruction for merging cells somewhere in your program. And in the center, I type my base, F-U-G-E. Notice I'm going to name the letters out loud as I type them, just as I would if I was working in the class. And that's a great habit to get into whatever mode you're working in. So uh, my base, F-U-G-E. And now um, I need to format the matrix. Um, I might as well just do it here so everything I type in is just easier. Um, I could go here, but I like this little tool that allows me to center both left and right and up and down. And I want my f font to be a little bit bigger, so I, I'm going to make that 24. Since this is my base, I'm going to distinguish it by making it bold. And maybe um, I'll distinguish it a little bit more just by making it a little bit larger. Okay, so now I can look. I'm going to start with a matrix just with these word sums. Um, is you... Teachers need to be clear on the fact that no matrix is comprehensive. And I might have looked at all these words, but decided that I'm only going to present uh, these for the moment. So when I look at this list, I see there's only one prefix that even shows up, and that's the RE. So I go and type that RE here. Since there isn't any more, I don't need this box. Um, so any unnecessary box, I just get rid of. So I, again, I highlight these two, go to uh, merge cells, click, and there. Since there's nothing else happening on the left of this prefix, I'll go here and I'll have it lean into the base. All right, now I can see what do I have following. Notice, wherever a plus sign happens in a word sum, it is represented with a, a vertical line in the matrix. The other thing that, that we see here, well, that will go down here. So I, I see the first suffix I have is a double E that follows the base. And what I was about to say there is that notice that in refugee, there are not three E's. The matrix, the word sum shows us that this vowel suffix replaces the single silent E with that slash marking there. Um, the matrix you need to know, you show the full morphological form of each element. Um, it's up to the word sum to show any changes. So that's not a mistake. It's need, you just need to know uh, that we put the full form of every every morpheme and mark the changes later when we put them together with the word sum. So when I go down here, I see the next suffix I have is an ES suffix. Since there's nothing following it, I'm going to use that same space, press return, and type my ES suffix. But when I get down to fugitive, I see I have two suffixes. So instead of putting the, the IV he, IVE here, I'm going to use this extra box I gave myself. 
I put my ITE, and now I need now I can split this section without affecting that section. So there's a few ways to do it, but I'm going to show you this tool I find helpful in Word, um, the draw table one, and it allows it turns my cursor into a pencil, and I can just draw a line and make a new a new cell. I turn it back off again, and now I can type the next suffix IVE. So now I have fugitive. Now notice there is no word I know of at least fugite, but it still has the ITE suffix followed by the IVE vowel suffix replacing the E. Now I see that I also have a more a plural for fugitive, so I still need yet another cell. So again, I go turn my cursor into a pencil and I divide this box, turn it back off so I can type and I put in my S suffix, all right? Um, and when I'm looking down here, I see fugitive, refu oh, refugees also has uh, a plural. So I need to add an S after the double E here, but I don't want that S to follow this ES because that there's no case in which that would occur. So I need to go back and get my draw table tool, and now I can separate those two uh, morphemes like this. So now when I cut when I divide that cell into two, I can now add my plural suffix s there. All right, I think I've got all my pieces. So now I can just pretty up my matrix a little bit. I don't need all of this extra space. is isn't doing anything for me. The base doesn't need this much space. So now I pull that back in. Uh, and I'm just going to pull in that. And similarly, this double E, and I'll line those up nicely. Now I can pull in, oh, this IVE has got lots of space. And now I can just pull in the whole side here and see what happens here. That seems to work. Now what I personally like to do uh, is if I have an affix that has uh, an element on either side, I leave it in the center. But if it's the final suffix, I will, I like to make it lean into uh, the 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 base or stem to which it's adding. So I don't want this ES in the center, I want it leaning against the base. And these are all like that, but I can make my S lean that way as well. And so I have that. Now if I want to go one step farther, just for the heck of it, I will do that. I highlight this, and now what I can do is I can add a color to the background. I just seem to be using yellow because it works well with the black. The other thing that I like to do is draw an outline around the outside border of the matrix and around the base just to really highlight the central uh, aspect of that. So if I make my line a little bit bigger, I'll go there and I take this draw table line. Now I can just highlight um, the outside border and make it bigger. And then I can follow by highlighting the, the borders around the base. And so now I've got a nice looking matrix. Now, I can just copy and paste that into something and have kids m make word sums from it. Um, there's any number of things I could do. Um, what I want to do now is say, okay, let's say we've done this one, but now I decide I want to actually expand this matrix into including uh, the other words I have here, like centrifuge and subterfuge, which are pretty cool. So um, let's see what I need to add. You can see that I need to have... Um, Immediately before the base, there's a prefix S-U-B-T-E-R. In the movie, I will show you, in the other movie, I can show you how I determined that C-E-N-T-R-E is a base, but S-U-B-T-E-R is a suffix. Um, at least that's my current hypothesis, so I'm going to use that here. So I go right into here, since I can just push return and put S-U-B-T-E-R, and that... Uh, works fine, but now I need to add my other base, C-E-N-T-R-E, -E. and since it has a connecting vowel letter, again, I have to separate it from these, which are linked directly to the base. So I go back to my tool. Uh, I just see that I've got this thick line, so I'm going to make it thinner again. I think it was somewhere like about a half. And so now I draw that line. Let's see how that works. Yep, that seems fine. So I turn that off, and now I can put in my C-E-N-T-R-E, -E. And again, I need to draw another line to give me room for my connecting vowel letter. I don't like that where that line came, so I'm going to go back here a little bit. Let's see how that goes. That's better. So I turn that off, and now I need to put the connecting vowel letter I. But it's important here that since this is a base, it's not just another prefix or suffix or connecting vowel letter, I mark it as bold. And that's why I kind of liked having this one a little bit bigger 
because it identifies that, well, there's two bases in this matrix, but this is the central base to which every morpheme in this matrix is attached. Um, another thing I forgot that I, I could, um, I like to do is I can type the underlying denotation of this base, um, flea, that I got from its Latin root. I'll, I don't want this to be bold, though, so I'm going to highlight it, make it not bold, make it quite a bit smaller, and now this is a reminder to uh, the reader that every word that can be built from this matrix, if it's correct, has this underlying denotation of the idea of flea. And that's an interesting uh, part of this. What I want you to recognize is that in the discussion, as you make this matrix, if you did this in front of the class or the kids were doing it, part of this is a key part of this is talking about the meanings of each of these words in relation to these. So how, what's the idea of flee linked to a refugee or, or a fugitive? That seems obvious, but it's interesting to jump into centrifuge, um, which we already did because we worked on these word sums, but it's the integration into this family that I think is a really rich way of going back over that uh, territory of meaning and structure. Um, the other thing that I like to do, if I've made, it, perhaps um, I'm making this for myself before a lesson, now I, ha I can save a copy of this finished matrix, but I can now do another one where I, do I get rid of all of these affixes, affixes, however people say it, and now it means, oops, I don't want to do that, let me do that, um, what it allows me to do is I could give this blank matrix to my class. And what that would mean is that now I could give them the word sums that we've done and, and give them kind of a starter matrix that they now have the job of finding an arrangement that works such that every word uh, in these word sums is somehow represented uh, by this matrix. So that's the basics of making a matrix. Um, I am about to go work on the film describing how we came up with these word sums. I hope you take a look at that. But I also hope you feel comfortable just building a matrix with any word you investigate. And having kids get starting on, on this, they, with their computer skills, will have no trouble. Cheers.